Hi, I'm Jim Bickford, and today I'm going to tell you about the LOI project uh, at Draper Laboratory and the beginning of the Draper Energy Initiative. So the first thing I'm going to do, though, is tell you about a small town in eastern Tennessee called Kingston. Back a few days before Christmas in 2008, in the middle of the night, residents awoke to this tremendous sound. It sounded like a locomotive going through their backyard. And what it turned out to be is that there's a large power plant in the vicinity, and there there's a dike that held back 50 years worth of ash from that power plant. After a few days worth of rain, it broke, and four football stadiums worth of ash got released into the local environment. Fortunately, no one was killed, but it has taken more than five years and more than a billion dollars to clean up. That plant chose to landfill the ash, though some power plants are actually able to sell the ash because there are users that take it and make concrete out of it, and that would be the preference. But for the ash to do that, it has to be within a certain realm, carbon content, or LOI, or loss on ignition. And what you really like is a sensor that can control and understand whether or not the ash is in the correct realm. Now, what I'm going to tell you about today is how you could take a sensor like that and do more than that. You can actually use it to improve the efficiency of the power plant and reduce the environmental footprint of it. Back in the 2008 time frame, um, we were trying to understand how we could best work in the national interest and leverage Draper's skills and technologies to actually go ahead and do something in the energy sector. The first thing we recognized was that nearly 50% of the U.S. power generation in the U.S. is generated by coal power. Power plants, coal power plants though, intrinsically are relatively inefficient. Only about a third of the power uh, from the coal or energy from the coal actually gets delivered to the consumer as electricity. The rest of it mostly gets vented into the atmosphere. Now you can never improve the efficiency to 100%, but if you could have improve it just by a few percent by taking a plant that's maybe 33% efficient and taking it to 36% efficiency, you did that across the entire fleet, you'd have a tremendous impact. So the thought was, there are only 500 or so plants in the US. If you could deploy a sensor and a control system around those plants and get that efficiency improvement, it would have more of an impact than all the solar, wind, and geothermal sources that have been deployed in my entire lifetime. So the genesis of the program starts when we recognize that the coal power was the area we wanted to work in. So we went and visited a number of uh, coal power producers, uh, the utility industry, the, the, and the different stakeholders in that area, and said, we'd really like to help you improve the efficiency of your plants. How can we help? And they were really excited to talk to us, because for the most part, people had been focused on solar, wind, and geothermal, and the coal industry had very little attention. So they were very willing to take us through the plants, tell us what was important from a technology perspective, as well as from an economic and policy perspective, and what really drove them and what their needs were. So this is where we first learned about the LOI sensor and the need for taking measurements of unburned carbon and ash uh, in their coal power plant. Uh, so what they did is they, they took us through the plants, and you can see pictures of us here. We're actually inside the plant. Uh, we got to go tour, understand how it worked. We could take measurements of it, and uh, understand really what the ins and outs of it were and how we'd actually operate a sensor and what would be required to operate a sensor such as that. And this is where they told us about the other people who have tried to generate uh, LOI sensors in the past, but who have had difficulty. Basically, they've always been too expensive and they haven't worked as well as they needed. So we took those lessons ahead to try to develop the sensor that I'm gonna tell you about. Let me go through and give you a little bit of information about coal power plants and how they actually work. You can see in the picture here, the uh, coal basically starts solid particles, it's ground down into dust and combined with air, it's blown into the large furnace. And the furnace, you can think of it as like a 15 or 20 story building that's been hollowed out with a tremendous fireball in the center and it burns. And on the outside, as the, the flow is pulled out and extracted, it goes past heat exchangers that removes that energy to boil water and that drives a steam turbine, which is actually what generates the power. Now on the back side of the plant, they actually remove contaminants and pollutants before it gets exhausted to the atmosphere. And this is where they put different types of sensors in some cases. Um, what we'd like to do is actually add our sensor there to complement other sensors. For instance, there are oxygen sensors in the plant typically. And that works just like an oxygen sensor in your car. If their oxygen content is too high, it means there's too much fuel and they can lower the fuel ratio or add more, uh, reduce the amount of air. The problem is there aren't enough measurements uh, and types of measurements. So uh, excess oxygen might be caused by other issues. For instance, if the coal pulverizers or the mills that grind the coal up uh, aren't working correctly, the coal particles may be too large and they don't completely burn. And when they don't completely burn, there's excess oxygen left over. So what they really want is a multitude of sensors 
that can take all these different measurements, complement one another, so they can understand what the real issues are that's driving the combustion process. And they need many of them because if there aren't enough, um, you can't, the plant is so large, what happens on one side may not correspond to what happens on the other. So you need to combine all the information together to really successfully drive uh, the coal power plant process and close the loop and actually optimize the combustion efficiency. What we did is we developed a sensor that would do this. Uh, we learned the lessons from what we've been told of past uh, attempts at building LOI sensors and how they didn't work. and recognized that it had to be very fast and very simple and as a result, uh, cheap to produce. So the concept was we would actually take ash, sample it from the coal pyro plant, take it out and drop it into an oven. The oven was warm and it would start to burn off. And when it burns off, the mass changes. And you can monitor that mass change. And that's, by definition, how LOI is actually measured. So we had a very cheap and simple process to do that. Um, that the challenge was integrating it into a very challenging environment. What this has been described as is it's like you're sitting on a tractor and you're driving through an oven and you're being sandblasted. And someone says, I would like to measure the contaminants in that sand. That's the sort of problem we have. So what we did is instead we built this sensor that could sit just outside and we take samples into it and then apply it from there and burn it off. And the challenge is the integration, but that working in harsh environments is what Draper excels at, which is what we focused on. We took our low cost, robust sensor that we want to use in a power plant and first validated it against the very expensive lab grade instruments uh, that are used traditionally to measure LOI. What we found is we had known samples, we ran it through both processes. We found that our instrument was equivalent in performance to those instruments that work just in the lab and cost an order of magnitude more. But more importantly, our instrument is capable of operating in a power plant environment. So now that we had a validated uh, instrument in the lab, we wanted to actually go out to the field to test it. So the first night we went, put our sensor in, and it was operating. We had a connection to uh, my cell phone, and we were monitoring it from the hotel room. And in the middle of the night, something very unusual happened. It was unclear. We drove up the next morning, and off in the distance, you could see these large cooling towers, and the plant we were actually operating at had turned off. We said, oh no, what could we have done to shut the plant down? We didn't know what had happened, why the plant was shut down, and if we had done anything to contribute to it. It turns out the plant shut down actually for another reason. Uh, and the behavior we measured was the plant actually as it shut down. Uh, so that day, we weren't able to take any more data. But we were able to go back uh, at other times. And as you can see the data here, we have taken data or a period of time showing how the plant oscillates um, through day and night cycles as the power ramps up and down, and how it has an, there's an impact from the time of day, the power load, even the user of the plant or the con uh, controller and what they're actually doing. In summary, we've completed uh, a prototype of the LOI sensor shown that it works in a power plant environment and it works successful. So the question is, what made us successful? To start with, we went back and we listened to the users and understood what their needs were and why things like that hadn't worked in the past. And we went and built a system that addressed those needs. And that system allows us to actually go through, control a plant in real time, uh, and greatly improve the efficiency. Now, from the Draper's Energy Initiative perspective, it was also very successful because it gained us insight into the power industry, how it works, as well as it brought us insight into what other needs are and opened up new opportunities for us in the energy sector and how Draper can apply its skills and technologies to that particular area.